Today we're going to do a build video on the Walking Robot Machine 2. Um, if you've watched the first demo then you already know a lot about it. But basically it was based off some uh, pulp art that I found online. I thought it'd be fun to actually make it as a 3D printed toy that you could all build. And I wanted to be able to make it use at least two, maybe three different types of uh, gear motors that you can find online. And if you didn't watch the demo, then basically what we're talking about is a clawfoot walker. Like that. And it's got a little, a little guy that I found at the dollar store that would fit in the control console. In this case, I just went with this. My local dollar store had these little figures. I didn't want to spend big bucks on anything and look like about the right size. Of course, I just used the uh, flame to uh, melt his ass and bend his legs in and make him fit in the... Uh, control console, but we'll talk about that more. And we'll talk about the different motors first. <clears throat> this uh, is the larger white TT type gear motor. They're uh, very powerful, they're a little bit noisy, and uh, they're geared down a whole lot. And they're really good for doing walking robots that you want to run on four and a half to six volts, so three or four batteries. I had a couple of these laying around, so I designed the one that you just saw walking and the one I'm going to assemble right now to use this motor but this motor is harder to find now here's the more standard TT type motor right next to it you can see that there is a a difference in size so I redesigned the uh, main body which holds everything to match up with this more standard TT gear motor. Now this is the 1 to 48 as they like to call it. In America we would call it 48 to 1. What that really means is for every 48 rotations of this motor you'll get one rotation of the output shaft. Now for doing walking robots where I don't want to gear things down externally I, I prefer normally to use the 1 to 120 or 120 to 1 meaning the motor turns 120 times and you get one rotation of the shaft. And I thought I had one of those here and I was going to do a build using that, but I found I didn't. So I actually stuck one of these in the in a build, which we'll, we'll talk about. And as long as you run it on a single battery, in this case I'm using AAA batteries, uh, it'll walk just fine. If you run it on two, it's a little bit too fast, a little bit chaotic. So the build is going to be the same regardless of which one you do, it's just which part you 3D print. For example, if you're going to use the larger white gear motor like I have sitting in this main body frame, then you would print out the one that says uh, body for white gear motor. And if you're going to use the other one, it'll say body for yellow gear motor. The files will be up on Thingiverse. And um, I made the battery box area big enough to hold a triple well three triple A battery holder for the white one which means it's big enough that you could put a two triple A battery holder in there if you're using the 120 to 1 and if you were just going to use the, uh, the easiest to find of all of them the 1 by 48 or 48 to 1 TT yellow motor you could put in either a single AAA battery holder or you could put in two AAA battery holders and wire them in parallel so you get one and a half volts. In any case there's enough room there to accommodate whichever way you want to go. The wire to go down. I'm using my standard slice which I use in all my projects which is 19 millimeters between uh, mounting holes. So you should be able to find those. I've found them on Amazon. The battery holders on Amazon. I find the motors on on Amazon and the motor itself fits snugly. I don't really have anything here to grab hold of with them at the moment. We're gonna there we go. So you can see I just bring the uh, wires from the battery holder through those slots down there, interrupt one of the wires with a switch, then I'm gonna bring the wires up to the motor. When the motor is sitting in this position, you want it running clockwise if you want the thing to walk forwards. We'll talk more about that. So if you're using the white motor you'll have to print the right frame for the white motor. Also the white motor 
and the output shaft is a different size than the yellow so you have to make sure you get the cams that are meant for the white motor and it'll say cam for white and they just push on to the shafts like that and you want to make sure that you uh, put the two cams opposite each other 180 out of degrees like that so if one is facing up then the other side should be facing down if you want the thing to lock and this is the uh, cam linkage they're both the same you print two of these and basically what's going to happen is this large round part is going to fit up inside here and then it'll drop down in place like that and we're going to connect the legs onto this hex shaft but before we do that the circle part fits around the cam of the motor so the easiest way to do all of this if there is an easy way is I like to start by if the camera is showing us putting them on either side of the motor and starting to fit them down into the slots push it and we're just going to I got, I'm hung up on a wire here Get that wire over there I'm not a hundred percent sure what I'm hung up on and then the whole thing will eventually push down in there I think this one cam is a little bit tight I'm gonna move it out of here when the motor is in place there should be enough of a gap if the wires are laying flat when we glue the front on this thing the wire should be able to fit in there and be basically pinches everything in place so at this point you should be able to turn the switch on and you should get a motion like this I think that's pretty good now there is a battery door that you can also 3D print put a little bit of uh, foam on there to rub against the batteries add some friction makes it fit nice and tight there's uh, two parts that fit in on that side it goes down and then you just pull it over to finish off the back now we could uh, glue the front on but I think before we do that let's talk about the legs here's one that I decided to go ahead and paint up add some detailing to it basically there is a right and a left leg and they're both made from two parts that you glue together for the leg itself and then the uh, the forked part that makes it walk this is a separate piece that we glue on to the bottom so here's the two parts and I haven't had this glue open in a while so I'm sure I need to clear the nozzle So, and let's just, uh, this is the weld on number 16. It's good for PLA because it actually melts the PLA, fuses it together. Much better than a super glue or anything like that. I'm going to Get the two halves together. I like to put the foot on something that's flat like this. And I'm just kind of pinch it. This stuff uh, sets up real quick. You don't have to hold it for very long. And you can hold it in different positions if you're not sure if you're getting everything nice and square. Yeah. Now the claw foot piece that we talked about this piece here that sticks out goes up under the toe, the foot part that's up in the air. Um, the claws, of course, are going to aim in. So if you've got 
the hex mounting part, you know that the claw part will aim in from there. And there's a slight, slight ridge right here. Not the big ridge back here, that's just for the claw toe. This here should line up with the back of the foot when you know that you're in place. So I'm going to take this flat part of the foot and just put some glue on there. And see if I can find that. I use, again, I'll use the table to make sure I got everything square. See, that gives me, make sure that you have a square thing so everything's not getting glued crooked or anything like that. Went all the way back to that. That mark, you can actually feel it when you put the part in place. And we'll let that set up a little bit. Um, so when you go to put them on, obviously it's not too hard. You figure that these are always going to face in. This is going to go onto the spline. If you screw something up, it just means you got to 3D print some more parts. It's not, not the end of the world. Put a little bit of uh, glue inside the, the hex hole. And let's push that on there. And we got one on. And we could be rushing things a little bit here, but it doesn't take a lot. I mean, you actually don't even have to glue the legs on if you don't want. There's enough of a spline there where you, you could just push them on and let it go at that. And we, and we have two, so we can actually test it at this point. the front part. It's where we end up gluing our little figure. I don't know that you really need to watch me gluing a little figure in. It does kind of have a little bit to do with uh, the ballast, you know, the weight distribution, the balance of this thing. Let's put glue in a few spots to hold it on there. And maybe I'll use the table to uh, make sure I get that on there nice and square. Flip everything upside down and push it into place. Like so. Alright, we'll let that sit for a second. So, this gray one, just so we can see the differences. As you can see, when I was putting this together, I had a, I didn't have a single AAA battery holder, but I had a, a double. And I didn't have the 120 to 1, I had the 48 to 1 motor. So, in this case, I just ran a wire from one side of it to the other, so the whole thing would be running on one and a half volts, because it's the... 148 or as it should more properly be called 48 to 1 motor in here and I don't think I'm going to glue this together yet because I don't know if I'm going to buy a uh, 120 to 1 motor or whether I'm going to buy a single AAA battery holder it could go either way so in the meantime I think I'll just hold the front cover and the little man all that good stuff on with a rubber band because like I say the build is exactly the same now that you know how to build it so this is the 48 to 1 148 running on one and a half volts you can see it so good speed and a good walker Much quieter than the large uh, white motor, too. And 
and of course there's a a battery door for it too but I can't really put it on with the rubber band in the way if I if I did put the uh, two batteries in there I'll just show you it's just the motor is a little bit too fast for that configuration it's a little bit unstable it almost wants to tip over but it uh, does walk right along so the options are yours I give you three different motor options for uh, doing the build let's see so this uh, glue is setting up without the guy in there it's leaning back a little too much but uh, and the claw foot was hanging up I'd have to look in there to find out why but you get the idea of the build question of balance. Also this table is uh, aiming uphill. It's not completely level. So there you have it. It's your build video.